Let's start with the G20 meeting and our money. David Barnson is with us, the Barnson Group CIO. David, um, I'm thinking of negatives that have been hurting this market. The Fed was a negative. Well, that's gone because they're not going to do what we thought they were going to do. How about trade? That's the China trade. That's the last big negative to get over, isn't it? No, the, both of those headwinds still are there, Stuart. I don't think the Fed is out of the way. I think that he back -talked, backtracked quite a bit from his October 3rd comment this week. The market responded accordingly. But the overall uncertainty is still there as to what the Fed you know, policy will be in terms of normalizing. But certainly the one right now that is front and center, you're right, is this, uh, the trade situation with China. And my uh, very strong suspicion is that we're going to get uh, some improvement out of it yes. this weekend yep. and the market will respond favorably. Yeah, I'm looking for a truce or some kind of ceasefire, some friendly faces, yeah. handshakes, some agreement, a standstill agreement, no more aggro. And uh, if that's the case, David... I would expect a very solid rally for the market come Monday morning. What do you say? Um, I think some of it will be in the details of, of how solid the sort of truce and ceasefire you referred to ends up being. You're right, though. You're speaking President Trump's language there. He loves if you get some tweets and some smiles and a press conference out of this. He's going to be very happy and the market will probably be happy. Well, but obviously we have to look further ultimately to what the the meat on the bone will look like and i think that they're going to suspend some of the tariffs that are on in exchange for opening up new markets what we don't know are things that could be really good which is what i've been talking on your show about almost all year which is the idea of us being able to export more natural gas to China. That could be a really big opportunity and be very positive for both sides. That's fascinating. By the way, David, you probably can't see it, but on our screens a moment ago, President Trump arriving at the main center where all the talk's going to be held. He just walked in. No big smiles as he walked in. He looked kind of serious because he got a big day ahead. One more for you, David. Uh, I'm sure you remember that surprise guilty plea from President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, came out yesterday. The market, though, just didn't seem to care. What do you make of that? The market hasn't cared about a single headline from this entire escapade all the way through. Now, is that because the market's getting it wrong? Or, and is that because there's no real issue there politically for the president? No. The issue is that the markets are focused on what markets are focused on. And until shown otherwise, there is nothing imminent that affects corporate profitability, monetary policy, the overall backdrop of economic growth. Hmm. Look, okay. on the whole entire Cohen thing, none of us have any idea where it's going to go, Stuart, but their market is smart enough because it's not political. The market does not have to do what CNN has to do with this type of news, which is try to make it into this big drama and soap opera. If it gets worse for the president, then we'll deal with that at that time. Right now, the markets are too busy dealing with trade deals and monetary policy. Fascinating. David, thanks for joining us. Good stuff indeed.